Thanks for watching today. Today we have three things on our agenda. I'm going to show you behind the scenes setting up a high school classroom just a little bit. You'll see the little bit of mess uh, before any students arrive. And I'll show you uh, what it looks like and I'm going to tell you what I teach and then I'm going to show you the anchor charts that I have made for this year. And then lastly, the third thing is I'll show you how I make an anchor chart and you're gonna to get to see one. I use some super beautiful fonts. I'm so happy with them this year. So come on along. Here is an amazing CTE classroom. I'm getting in order. This is a modern home ec. So all those subjects that people say, they should have taught this in high school or I wish they would teach this in high school. We actually do. So I'd encourage you to look up uh, before you make that comment. I really need something for this space right here. So this year my vision is to make some anchor charts. I'm going to show you the ones I've already made and then how I map one out. Um, here is the big giant roll of the ones I already made. So I do make them on one big sheet and then I cut them apart later. A lot of times I use school colors. All right, I'll show you some more. So I teach a um, business management class. I, I'm in the business pathway, marketing pathway for CTE, but as part of that, I do fashion merchandising, fashion marketing, and also some culinary throwback to um, family and consumer sciences, the old home ec. So I have some, some information about there, and we really just use it as a way uh, like kind of as a, a structure to build businesses on, right? It's just our choice of business formats. So they do learn some hands-on also. And then this is my favorite right here. This I'll leave up all year. And I'm excited because we're not going to be using a lot of paper this year. Obviously, um, not going to collect as much. Uh, and they don't have pencil and paper like they used to. So I'm putting paper up around the room and they can have these things constantly uh, to be able to look at so that the most important parts of my class do get into their head and, and they can get off the devices a little bit, right? That's my goal. So here I have some paper. I like the craft paper a lot, but I also have white and I like to cut it more long ways uh, just because of where I'm going to put it and it's a little easier to hang up and I do not laminate anything anymore. You know, forget about laminating because it's just making plastic, it's just making trash and plastic doesn't go away. So I'm just going to use this paper and I'm going to roll them up when I'm done and I'll reuse them and they'll be fine. Yeah, I have all my supplies set up. I have my giant roll of paper and a ruler and pencil if you're not super experienced with making lines. If you're a FCS teacher, then you might be more used to doing this. I'm not gonna use a ruler and I'll show you my workaround for that. I have some great school markers and I do like using these fonts. These are from Teachers Pay Teachers, the Hello fonts and they, this came with so many I bought and I, I like to map them out here and then I can copy it as I work or sometimes I'll practice. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger and that's the one I'm gonna use right now. I'm gonna draw up some pattern symbols. Also, I have my information ready that I'm going to put on to the anchor poster. Couple choices today from my Pinterest boards. I have this one that's from the sewingloftblog.com. And then I have this one that comes from um, blogtreasury.com. And I also have my book, my textbook that I use in my classroom. I can always take it from, okay? So have your information ready. My first step is just kind of mapping it out where I want everything to be on, on the paper. So I want this to kind of look like it had highlighting on it. So I'm going to take my highlighting marker and I'm going to write pattern symbols across here. So I just put in some highlighting marks 
And this will be in the background. And I do that because I don't want to put it on after where I think it will bleed. So I'm putting it on now. And this is also kind of helping me frame where my letters are going to be. Okay. And then maybe on a scratch piece of paper, I might take this uh, font styling and just kind of map it out, right? So I might practice where the letters start and end, see the big loop. So you know about letters, there's three sections, right? Three guidelines and where lines fall is kind of how you determine the shape of them. So like the T's, for example, they cross about mid to low, mid to low. The E crosses dead center, right? The R here, this also is very centered. Whereas the P crosses very low. See down here, it comes much lower, making a bigger loop, all right? So I kind of have that. The other thing I will do with my font or lettering is count how many letters I have and space it out. Often I do the middle letter first. So with this, there is seven letters. So the middle letter will go in the dead center. And then I'll work from there. So if this is the center letter area, I know I can get one, two, three more letters on each side, which is what I need, okay? So that's where, that's how I mark out letters. The other thing I'll do is a lot of times I'll start at the very end and work backwards uh, to make sure I have enough room. I always think of a skirt. You know, when you do that um, thing with a skirt, when you're gathering it and you divide it in half and then divide it in half again and then divide it in half again, that's kind of what you're gonna do here. So I'm gonna divide it in half. I have to get three and a half letters in here, right? And then if I divide it in half again, I have to get one and a half letters in this space. So then I have to get one letter in about this space. That's where I'm, that's where my thinking is. So let's start with the T in the middle. And then this T matches. And I'm gonna go over my letters in a little bit for some thickness where I want it to be. But just for right now, I'm going to map them out. And the same thing for the word symbols. It's also seven letters. You can really get a lot of space controlling how big the O is. You know, you can fill a nice space or you can make it smaller if you need to. And with the S, the bigger bump is on the top. So I'm going there. And then again, we have the bigger bump on top. And also with the M, you can also control some space you can decide if you want the M to be bigger or smaller. Now I'm going back in. I can thicken up the down lines, all the down lines. That always looks super fun. I can, if I have a letter like the R here, which I love, I think it's so cute. I can thicken up the down lines, right? Here's another down line. Here's a down line. And that's really pretty. The other thing I could do if I have an R is I can widen out all the straight lines, something like that. And then I can add a pattern or color in here, anything I want to do. I can add dots all over, right? And my test is always just to stand back. I can thicken up all the lines, right? And then add some color in there, a lot of fun. Even some ombre color would be beautiful. With these, I think I'm just gonna add some thickness overall because I have, oh, maybe just on the down. Yeah, the down is cute. And then next, I'm gonna do the same thing with my pattern symbols. I'm just gonna divide the space first before I start, map them out. 
If you're not good at drawing, do the same thing as I tell my students, make it more of a diagram. So use a ruler and make it more technical drawing. A great thing to do is to add some labels to your diagram so that everybody is crystal clear, even if you are not a good draw, drawer, drawer, not good at drawing. All right. I'm going to show you the rest of my poster as I go. My anchor chart is finished. I'm really happy with it. It's super cute. It fits with my classroom just right. Let me know if you want me to upload a video of my finished classroom and the way I designed it. Thank you so much for watching.